What's up, Coordination? On this episode of the Green Pill Pod, we have Nasjak, who is an author that wrote the Terrapunk Manifesto. So we're exploring all of the different imaginations for what type of punk Ethereum in Web3 is. And on this episode, we talk about Terrapunk, which Nasjak defines as a fork of solarpunk, which is more about human maximalism. So on this episode, we talk about the twin requirements of the need for further economic growth. Our political economies are based around the idea of about 2% growth per year, and also the need to solve our coordination failures or problems with sustainability. Nasdaq's major beef with solar punk is that you don't see a lot of humans in solar punk art. So what would have to be true for us to have high human pro-market and pro-sustainability tools and future that we build? That is TerraPunk in a the ultimate reductionist way. There's, of course, uh, lots of little fun attributes of Terrapunk that we get into in this episode. And I think that as we imagine what kind of future the the world that we want to bend, uh, that we want to bend the world towards with Web3, these conversations about cypherpunk, solarpunk, lunarpunk, Terrapunk are going to be really important. So I think that this has been a really fun episode, and I think that you'll enjoy it. Without further ado, I'll give you Nasjak of the Terrapunk Manifesto. Enjoy. The world has woken up to refi and sell Celo is here for it. Celo is the layer one for the regenerative finance movement. It's fast, planet positive, and built for the real world. Celo has committed to producing a sustainable future from day one and has built its technology around one of the lowest carbon impact consensus mechanisms and is the world's first carbon negative EVM compatible layer one blockchain. Celo is a movement to create the conditions of prosperity for everyone, whether it's tokenizing carbon credits with Toucan, providing capital to underserved communities with Unicorn, or building for millions of users around the globe. Celo was created to transform crypto enthusiasts into a movement of change makers. Follow along on Twitter at Celo.org to learn more about how Celo is accelerating refi for a positive, lasting impact on people, communities, and the planet. And if you're a builder interested in refi, be sure to join the Build with Cello hackathon live now with a prize pool of over $100,000. CoinShift is a leading treasury management and infrastructure platform for DAOs and crypto businesses that need to manage their treasury operations. Every crypto org needs to manage its treasury, and CoinShift offers a simple, flexible, and efficient multi-chain treasury management platform built on top of the highly secure Gnosis Safe. With CoinShift, your organization can go from primitive single-chain treasury management to expressive, flexible, and multi-chain treasury features, such as global user management, global contacts, proposal management, and many other features that can be shared across an entire organization, allowing users to save time and reduce operational burdens and gas costs. CoinShift even has data tools like account reporting across the seven chains on which it operates. Used by industry powerhouses such as Uniswap Grants, Balancer, Consensus, and Masari, CoinShift is speeding up the coordination and efficiency of the organizations that use it. You have to keep up with the frontier, and CoinShift makes that easy. So sign up at coinshift.xyz slash bankless. Um, really excited about this essay that you wrote, the Terrapunk Manifesto. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Uh, so I wrote the Terrapunk Manifesto after reading about Solarpunk and just being kind of dissatisfied with some of the answers that it provides uh, for the future. Um, the Terrapunk Manifesto kind of, I see it as a step um there used to be steampunk and not, and then there was cyberpunk and then there was solarpunk and i kind of see it now as there's terrapunk uh so the terrapunk manifesto kind of contrasts against solarpunk a little bit although i think solarpunk is useful in some cases but it kind of goes beyond uh solarpunk and it, terrapunk is terraforming punk so it's about creating new worlds and expanding consciousness and creating more land um, well, yeah, I mean, I'd love to to talk about how you would define steampunk and solar punk and use that as a base to talk about how TerraPunk builds on those ideas. Yeah, I mean, steampunk is um, steampunk is like, you know, it, it's kind of like kitschy technology. Um, it has these pistols and everything. Uh, it's it's mm-hmm. to me, it's kind of it's kind of fun and it's kind of uh, a little bit retro uh, in a way. And it kind of goes back in a nostalgic sense. Cyberpunk is like futurism, dystopia. Uh, solar punk is, you know, kind of contrasting against cyberpunk and mm-hmm. it is trying to be more pleasant and enticing and like, uh, I, you know, it, it's more green, uh, whereas cy- cyberpunk rarely has any green unless it's, you know, one piece of green compared to like uh, the entire dystopian piece and it's like a dying tree or something. Uh, yeah. So solar punk is like the complete opposite of that it has a ton of trees and this is more in the aesthetic sense. Uh, than like what the ideological sense is trying to say. 
Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, solar punk is is a is a is a lot of greenery and trying to create life. Um, but I, yeah. I think that you know, as I get into in the essay, I think there's some flaws with like uh, that sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess like my definition is just to put them in the pot and to stir stir it is that uh, steampunk is a genre science science fiction that uh, has a historical setting and features steam powered machinery rather than advanced technology. It's always to me been sort of like an artistic aesthetic. Um, Cypherpunk, uh, some of the art is very dystopian and futuristic, but the Cypherpunk manifesto actually goes into the values of privacy and sovereignty as sort of like core principles for organizing of human societies. And then solar punk as an art aesthetic has been around like high utopia, high nature, scenes in which humanity is integrated with the environment but uh you know when you actually read a solar punk manifesto there's people who are trying to interpret the art and derive values from that and they talk about a world in which we've solved our contemporary problems with sustainability from there so i guess like you know as we try to pin these downs it seems like depending on the vantage point you look at there's different definitions of these art movements uh there, there's not like one central authority that's kind of saying what the values and the aesthetics of these are it's all kind of an interpretive movement given by people on the internet I, i'm curious if you would agree with that or or disagree as we're building a, a foundation of sh- of shared knowledge yeah and um yeah yeah no i agree with that i would also just say that uh in the essay i do call it uh cyberpunk instead of cypherpunk and Mm -hmm. i do think those are two different uh movements i'm more familiar with the cyberpunk movement um but also yeah like you were saying it's kind of they're all kind of decentralized and a bunch of people talking about these movements and and uh connecting with them i would i would just like to say like i don't necessarily plan to be the front face of Terra Punk or like the the leader of Terra Punk. I just wanted to put out a manifesto out there, uh, kind of just talking about these ideas and hopefully uh people mm-hmm. kind of take them and run with them. And like, yeah. you know, on the Terra Punk Twitter account, I could like retweet art or something if if people start creating. Got it. And that that Twitter account is twitter.com slash Terra Punk. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. We'll make sure that gets into the show notes. Okay, Two so, R's, uh, by the way, because there's, the, you know, Balaji, he quote tweeted the original tweet and he was saying that should be Terra Punk, uh, T-E-R-A, which is energy levels. So it was like Giga, Terra, uh, kind of on the energy scales. Um, whereas Terra with two R's is uh, terraforming. So it's it's mm-hmm. creating more Earth. And I think, you know, in this scenario, we might go beyond uh, the Terra energy scale. Mm-hmm. Got it. So, so, I mean, I guess like, now that we've built that 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 foundation of shared knowledge, um, it seems like to me Terra Punk in its most reductionist form is is kind of like a fork of Solar Punk that's designed to be more high human. We've got into our political economies baked into the idea, uh, baked into our political economies is the idea of like two percent growth year over year. And you know if we're going to solve our sustainability problems, but also solve uh, the ability for our economies to still support people, then solar punk doesn't seem to actually have a lot of humans in it. Like we can't just go back to this, this perfect, uh, immaculate earth that existed 3000 or however many years totally. ago, we need to create a civilization. We can't go back harmony. to Genesis. Yeah, exactly. So Terra punk is, is kind of, um, talking about what it means to have expansion and also sustainability. Is that too reductive reductionist? And, and how would you, how would you change that? No, no, that's exactly it. Because I do think that solar punk wants to go back to Genesis. It wants to go back to kind of the commune and like everybody's uh, reducing themselves or just doesn't have too much like output uh, in terms of carbon footprint. And so that that kind of ends up uh, minimizing humanity in, in one of two ways. It's either you minimize the space that each human gets. So it's human atomization. And that means like we all, maybe we eventually have an earth uh, full of just like apartment buildings and everybody gets like almost no space. Um, but we're trying to have as many humans as, as we can, or it turns into, uh, you know, people still want their space, but uh, you can't have too many humans with carbon footprint. So it's, it's human minimization. Uh, so, so you just can't have that many human, nobody repopulates. This is what we're seeing with the repopulation crisis, um, with birth controls plummeting. This is kind of that ideology. It's reducing humanity and human, 
uh, the number of human lives to uh, kind of like save the environment. And it's like humans only output to save the or humans only input to save the environment is just reducing humanity and the earth will like take care of itself. That's kind of what solar solar punk is, but Terra punk, it's like, no, we should have uh, a lot of consciousness and we can actually like terraform the earth. We can create, uh, you know, for example, clouds from the oceans that rain on the Californian wildfires or it like rains water on the Salton Sea and it it terraforms the Salton Sea though so that it becomes livable again. Uh, we can create all these environments where there's space for humans and we don't have to uh, reduce ourselves. And then, you know, we expand beyond just Earth and we go to to Mars and, you know, terraform Mars and and beyond right and there was one point where uh i kind of you know uh we go to different gas giants that maybe haven't uh begun fusion or or sun yet and like we we start lighting them and creating sun and uh you know habitable earths and uh, i use this phrase as i was just reading the manifesto before this podcast uh lighting the beacons of gondor uh to herald like mm -hmm. life in the universe like that's the that's the vibe like it's it's consciousness spreading out into the universe to experience the universe and i think that's very beautiful and i think that's um not really seen enough in in solar punk yeah so it feels like it, you know if we're gonna solve our sustainability problems but also continue expanding resources tech humanity and population that's quite a thin line to walk if you're just on earth and there's a limited amount of resources i mean unless you solve totally. for some sort of renewable input uh low low waste and then output that doesn't externalize harm um does terrapunk necessitate humanity expanding out to other planets into the stars where there's going to be more physical resources or do you kind of remain unopinionated on that um you know i think terrapunk you know maybe we could uh bring resources from the stars back to earth uh, maybe we create O'Neill cylinders with more Earths. Maybe it, maybe we have to go out. Maybe we just, um, like, for example, solar punk, uh, as the name implies, you know, even if, even if you want to get away from it, but like a lot of people on Reddit and I, I tried confirming this just, uh, but like a lot of people on Reddit, uh, are against nuclear, for example, but nuclear is one of those technologies that compresses like the energy output, uh, with like its footprint, um, mm -hmm. compared to solar panels and so of like, so we don't have to blanket mountains with solar panels. Um, I, I, I do think that the idea of Terrapunk and having, uh, you know, billions and billions or trillions of humans, uh, does necessitate, nece necessitate going out into the stars. Um, mm -hmm. I, do, I don't think that Terrapunk is compatible with just like stagnation and staying on Earth. Mm -hmm. well, maybe not stagnation, but uh, yeah, I, I think it does right. go out into the stars. There's some really great visuals on the Ter Terrapunk Manifesto, which, by the way, will be in the show notes of this podcast episode that kind of have a Venn diagram that compares solar punk and terrapunk so um some of the the memes that i see in in terrapunk is pro markets pro nuclear pro dyson spheres pro genetic engineering expanding life throughout the universe um increasing population and and in the center between solar punk and terrapunk we have green architecture and trees we're anti-climate change and we're pro tech and and have that in in solar panels in common with solar punk but but you know, I, I want to drive in on the, the part of this Venn diagram that talks about solar punk in which you say that um, solar punk is anti-markets and um, humans are subservient to nature and the collective is greater than the individual. Sub, sub, the individual's rights are subservient to the collective. Um, do you think that that's your interpretation of solar punk? Does the art and aesthetic actually confer those things? And in what ways do you think that solar punk is, is missing the mark? So, yeah, so I tried, uh, cause I know this would, it would be like, uh, subversive or controversial, mm -hmm. uh, to kind of like, you know, neg solar punk like this. Uh, mm -hmm. I did like, I spent a lot of time reading the Reddit and, uh, the original papers and a lot of people talking about it. And they were often like saying that, you know, capitalism is what destroyed, uh, the environment, uh, which, you know, we could get into the, <laughs> you know, uh, but like, um, and, and it was very, very anti-capitalism, anti-markets. And it was more like, uh, you know, reduce yourself, uh, to like kind of save the earth. Mm -hmm. Got it. So it seems like there's and, and, like and also like if you if and another thing and one other thing uh, about the collectivism 
versus the individual is that Noah Smith, for example, on Twitter, um, you know, he was talking about how he tried to find good solar punk stories uh, with mm-hmm. like, you know, characters um, tell, telling a journey. And he, he was like, there are, there are literally zero solar punk stories. And it's because mm-hmm. I think in my opinion, this is now, this is kind of my interpretation of why this is, is happening is because mm-hmm. there's no um, kind of hero at the, at the center of solar punk. And it's because uh, mm-hmm. everybody kind of minimizes themselves for the for the collective and so it, with that there's not uh much of a story to tell there's no mm-hmm. journey to go on got it so you would contrast it with terra punk which is high growth using technology to solve humanity's problems therefore there can be a sort of hero's journey that's up and to the right uh because we're expanding mm-hmm. out to the stars we're maintaining our economy and are maintaining our um the earth and sustainability yeah. and, and so so on and it shouldn't just rely on like one hero. It, it should be that everybody has the resources to go on their own kind of hero's journey. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the, you know, the sort of ideas that we discuss on this podcast a little bit is creating change of self, but also change of system. So basically, how can we build you know, this is this is a podcast that's about crypto and is about Web3 and what kind of civilization does Web3 do, programmers want to build. And so a lot of this debate between Lunar Punk, Solar Punk, Terra Punk is about imagineering what kind of world that we want to create. And, um, you know, I'm wondering, you know, how that hero's journey fits into the Web3 space. And, and, you know, if I'm an entrepreneur or someone who's participating in the Web3 space, how can I route my resources or uh, my attention to things that are actually going to be pro humanity and it seems like also pro economy and there's a space for kind of a a pluralism of heroes journeys here to help to if this is the direction that the community decides to go there's a pluralism of of heroes journeys in order to uh take us to a more terra punk world if if that's what people have um decided so i guess you know do you have any comments on sort of what you see out of web3 do you think web3 is more solar punk cypher punk terra punk and you know if so how can how can people practically apply these meth like these ideas these imaginations in their designs yeah that's a great question um so perhaps there's ways are ways to uh, utilize the the blockchain or Web three for TerraPunk technologies. I'm not exactly sure what that would be, but I would mm. say like it, like because that's a that's a future tech. Like it needs to be built. Um, and if I knew what it was, like I would I would probably just go do it. Um, but I would say that in terms of like current examples that are happening is. For example, you know, Vitalik, obviously he's he's uh, made a lot of money from <laughs> Ethereum and mm-hmm. he's started to uh, donate that or invest that in startups or technology, uh, creating these kind of like longevity, uh, you know, human increasing human lifespan, increasing uh, biology research, uh, these kind of ideas that are, that are similar to TerraPunk veins. And so it's kind of like taking the money that he made from Web3 or Ethereum or however you want to phrase it, and then investing it in these futuristic technologies. Mm-hmm. I think that's, to me, the most concrete example uh, that I've seen so far. And, and then, you know, there's also art. Um, the Web3 community is incredible at creating aesthetics and memes and uh, kind of propagating these. And, you know, you know, maybe maybe there's a there's a way for NFTs or art to be created about Cherpunk. That would be yeah. the other thing. Working in Web3 is awesome. It's freeing, powerful, and so much fun. But working outside of the typical W2 employee structure is a deal breaker for so many. Opolis is helping the self-sovereign worker focus on what they do best, their work, while managing the back end for them. There is a lot of nation state overhead when working in Web3, and Opolis takes care of all of the back end stuff, freeing you up to do what you do best. Opolis leverages group buying power through a community employment co-op, helping you save 20 to 50% on high quality, affordable healthcare options through Cigna. So do what you love and maintain your financial security. With Opolis, you must be authorized to work in the United States to receive Opolis benefits, but Opolis is expanding its services to Canada starting on January 1st, 2023. So book a 30-minute consultation with the Opolis experts and join Opolis by December 31st of 2022 and get a 1,000 work tokens and a 1,000 bank tokens when you sign up. So go to connect.opolis.co slash bankless to get started.
Goldfinch is a decentralized credit protocol with a mission to connect the world's capital to the world's growth. Goldfinch focuses on real yields from real companies. So start lending your USDC to real businesses driving growth worldwide. Goldfinch's borrowers are proven fintechs and credit funds in emerging markets who need access to Goldfinch's capital to drive economic growth in regions faced with barriers to financial access. In just under two years, Goldfinch has loaned over 100 million USDC, reaching over a million people and businesses across 28 countries. Goldfinch is doing what DeFi was always meant to do, expanding financial access to those who have historically been shut out of the TradFi system. So become a Goldfinch member to put your USDC to work, empowering real businesses growth. Join Goldfinch's new member vaults to be an active investor and take part in supporting Goldfinch's security and expansion. Receive yield enhancements generated by protocol revenue, plus access exclusive communication channels and more. So go to goldfinch.finance to get started. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it feels like we're in this cycle of kind of defining the, the world that we want to live in and then building the world that we want to live in. And, you know, I'm curious to zoom out a little bit and to um, look beyond just solar punk and TerraPunk and, and um, you know, what what do you think of, of things like lunar punk uh, or, or cypher punk and, and how do they fit into TerraPunk? Like if lunar punk is basically solar punk, but with more focus on privacy and sovereignty, is that TerraPunk also? Do you think it's even useful to ask that question? Are we creating a pluralism of punks? Like, how do you think how do you think TerraPunk uh, compares to other things besides besides solar punk? And is that even a useful question to ask? Yeah. Um, so you kind of cut out a little bit, but I think um, from what you were asking is like is is uh, Lunar Punk kind of a subdivision of TerraPunk or is it like its own thing? I I did discuss privacy a little bit in the TerraPunk manifesto uh, or decentralization, mostly like with respect to decentralization of resource. So like uh, mm. I should be able to create like my own energy, be off the grid, um, that kind of thing if I wanted to. Mm. Um, so I, and, and, and I don't know a ton about Lunar Punk. I'd love to listen to the podcast that's going to come out uh, on Lunar Punk mm -hmm. that you just recorded and mentioned to me. Uh, but I, I wish I had a better answer for that. Right. Okay, that's fine. That's part, kind of part of why we're doing all these podcasts mm -hmm. together is to um, compare all the different punks that that web3 thinks it is and compare and contrast them and no it's to great to learn about them. yeah 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 um well, what what didn't i ask you about terrapunk that that you want to tell us um just like uh i just want more futuristic optimistic art that features humans because mm -hmm. a lot of the a lot of the art is just greenery without humans, and uh, you know I'm I'm looking at the Terrapunk manifesto and and uh, it's the art section, and mm -hmm. it's like he, after defeating the villain, the Terrapunk continues using their newfound skills to transform the environment around them. Uh, for example, after Iron Man creates his suit in the cave, he doesn't stop at Mach one. After defeating the villain, he also mm -hmm. begins using his newfound technology to power the city. In each of his stories, he continues use evolving and fighting fighting lar larger scale enemies. He's proactive, like he keeps mm -hmm. uh, evolving his technology in advance of of the threats. Uh, I just I just really want um, incredible art to be created, and this this kind of comes back to how Hollywood is very pessimistic about technology like if you go watch the new jurassic world um mm. it's basically there's autistic tim cook uh being portrayed as the villain and it's like like what are we doing here like tim cook didn't even create apple but you know it's like mm -hmm. it's this whole thing um and and there's this thing where if somebody gave her blood a little bit like she could save the world but it's bad to do it's like it's just all convoluted and it doesn't make sense and mm -hmm. i just want better uh, stories to tell. Uh, they're yeah. more more optimistic and and real sci-fi. Um, so that's one thing. Yeah, it's definitely the art is just. I'm I'm not uh, altogether pleased with with current Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I will note that uh, the, the Terra Punk Twitter account I think is Obviously, one that you Iron Man is Hollywood. Yeah, um, the Terra Punk <laughs> Twitter account is uh, you've asked people if they create Terra Punk art to tag you to tag that Twitter account and you'll retweet it and hopefully that can proliferate totally. more imagination about high tech, high human, pro markets kind of worlds. Totally. And, and yeah. So to uh, one one thing that uh, one of the pictures that I have is uh, it's kind of these stone hands that are that are uh, larger than humans. 
Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're, they're like 20 feet tall and they're holding this, uh, walkway, this bridge. And so it's like this large human is kind of holding this bridge that humans are walking on. Um, mm -hmm. and so that, that was like a really cool, like, okay, you know, we should have larger than life humans. We should have like the stat, uh, the Colossus of Rhodes, um, mm -hmm. you know, marking our waterways. Um, and so, and so if there's any artists listening to this one th idea that I have is this, this kind of like Atlas shrugged character, uh, kneeling over this, like, you know, he's, uh, he's kneeling and beneath his knees is this, is the city, like this massive city, but he's Atlas is just so massive. He's, he's massive. Uh, there's a ring of mountains surrounding him and there's like a terraformed Mars, like on his, on his shoulders. That's like one, uh, Terrapunk image that I have that I've been trying to create with Dolly or something like that. But, um, yeah, mm. if anybody tweets these kind of things at me, I'll, I'll definitely retweet them on the Terrapunk account. I would love that. Right. Well, you know, um, uh, I, I, I'm not sure that I, I'm not sure that I agree with the uh, some of the criticisms of solar. Like I don't think that solar punk as an art movement goes on record about markets. Um, and but but yeah, maybe the community around solar punk has gone on record about that. But I, I do think that the Web three community errs being, towards being pro markets. Like we're literally implementing technologies from a book called Radical Markets in order to create more sustainability. So in that sense, I think I believe that Ethereum is Terrapunk. Uh, what it's doing is building it is building a high human, high mark like pro markets, uh, pro sustainability uh, movement within within the Web three ecosystem. And I think that that's cool to see the mirror between the ethos of Web three and the Terrapunk aesthetic. Totally, I love the and you know perhaps that's why solar punks uh don't like any of this any of the web3 stuff they always you know criticize it for harming the environment or taking one percent of energy usage but um you know i i love that that uh saying ethereum is terra punk that's great yeah um great well i think that uh action items for the community is to read the terra punk manifesto check out the art follow terra punk on on twitter and I'm looking forward to seeing how these movements co-evolve with each other. And uh, if Ethereum evolves in a more TerraPunk direction, hopefully this will this episode will have had a small impact on that. Uh, anything else to say? Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, no, me too. Uh, I'm excited to see the Lunar Punk podcast, and I'm excited to see all of these kind of new ideologies evolve. It's definitely a, a you know, it's a it's a time to be creating these kind of things and thinking about the future. It's very important, and uh, uh, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was a lot of fun. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Jack. <laughs>